Together, let us stand and recite the entrance antiphon. To you I call, for you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. Guard me as the apple of your eye. In the shadow of your wings, protect me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to and you, you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my, in my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what, what I have failed, failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whom he has taken by his right hand to subdue nations before him and strip the loins of kings, to force gateways before him that their gates be closed no more. It is for the sake of my servant Jacob, of Israel my chosen one, that I have called you by your name, conferring a title though you don't know me, I am the Lord unrivaled. There is no other God besides me. Though you do not know me, I arm you, that men may know from the rising to the setting of the sun that apart from me, all is nothing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord glory and power. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. Give the glory, the glory and power. The Lord is great and worthy of praise, to be feared am- above all gods. The gods of the heavens are not. It was the Lord. Who made the heavens. Give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord, you families of peoples, give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Bring an offering and enter his courts. Give the Lord glory and power. 
Worship the Lord in his temple, O earth, tremble before him. Proclaim to the nations, God is king. He will judge the peoples in fairness. Give the Lord glory and power. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Thessalonians. From Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church in Thessalonica, which is in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, wishing you grace and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We always mention you in our prayer and thank God for you all and constantly remember before God our Father how you have shown your faith in action, worked for love and persevered through hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We know, brothers, that God loves you and that you have been chosen, because when we brought the good news to you, it came to you not only as words, but as power and as the Holy Spirit and as utter conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Your word is truth, O Lord. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees went away to work out between them how to trap Jesus in what he said. And they sent their disciples to him, together with the Herodians, to say, Master, we know that you are an honest man and teach the way of God in an honest way, and that you are not afraid of anyone because a man's rank means nothing to you. Tell us your opinion then. Is it permissible to pay taxes to Caesar? or not but Jesus was aware of their malice and replied you hypocrites why do you set this trap for me let me see the money you pay the tax with they handed him a denarius and he said whose head is this whose name Caesar's they replied he then said to them very well give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So dear brothers and sisters in Christ, so in this Gospel text, as said in the beginning words, say that the Pharisees want to trap Jesus because they were singled out along with others that Jesus mentioned in the parable about the king who went talk about not the parable of the king and the wicked guests who were invited to this king's son's wedding. That was last Sunday's gospel. But these guests that were invited, rejected, rather turned down the invitation, saying they are too busy or, or even kill the servants. And then the king was uh, furious, right? So he dealt with them in a way that is described in the gospel text and then uh, invited the rest. Uh, those, those were not in the first original list. So this was, so, so they, here they look, took this opportunity to hit back at Jesus with this question of paying taxes. Always a hot and debatable issue, even to this day even to in Singapore also, right? And even now the world is talking about digital tax, right? Uh, physical tax, right? We order something online and it brings, come to Singapore, you have to pay GST, right? Physical goods. But what about those digital goods, uh, services, software, music? Uh, uh, all this is in the intense discussion right now. So then... Jesus, of course, knew that this trap 
and knew that they were carrying money that bears the image of Caesar's because to pay taxes to the Roman authorities, you, you need to pay uh, with the correct currency. In the days of Jesus, there were at least two parallel currencies in every territory that the Romans had conquered. Right? So one is the, the one with the Caesar's face on it, and for the Jews, they call it denarius, and then the shekel. Uh, the Jews will use it to pay the temple tax. So when Jesus say, yeah, you bring out uh, those uh, money that you pay taxes with, there they got caught and then they are trapped, backfire. But more importantly, dear friends, is that what belongs, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God has a more deeper message for them and for us today also. So in the days of Jesus, yes, Caesar is regarded as a god. So every subject of the Roman Empire must pay taxes and worship him as a god under the pain of death. And that's why the early Christians were persecuted because they do not regard Caesar as a god. Huh? And then, so they were beheaded or mart martyred uh, eaten by lions and many other ways of uh, crucified even uh, by these uh, Romans. And what belongs to God here would mean that there's a distinction between Caesar and God. So God is certainly somebody that is higher, superior than Caesar. And for the smarter Pharisees, they can recall the words of Prophet Isaiah in the first reading where King Cyrus, not a Jew, but he acknowledged that God, as the reading say, God is somebody that is, is no other compared to him, that arm him, equip him to conquer so many territories from Persia to Turkey. Now, that means from Iran to Turkey of these days. And overpowering the Babylonians where they have brought the Jews into exile, into Babylon. And there, he acknowledged that God gave him this greatness, so in, in gratitude, he set them free, allowed them to go back to Jerusalem, yeah, to rebuild their temple and to rebuild their country. So, this gives rise, this first reading and this gospel text gives rise to this importance of the distinction between church and state relationship. And there are two very important institutions and authorities in our time, including the time of Jesus. Because the civil authorities will take care of many, many things that occur in the temporal order. Like in this present day, the public health, the importance of maintaining public health, maintaining public confidence and trust that the COVID-19 virus can be overcome. Provided, yeah, we do the right things. So it seems that we are doing the right things, but then it's still a long way off. Yeah, because our imported cases are going up and some days the cases in Singapore are just imported cases, which means that virus are entering Singapore every day. And probably the strains are different because this mutation, this virus mutates very fast. And we are not very far away from Changi Airport. So dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the precautions that we have put in place is certainly very necessary for us to prevent infection because nobody wants to be hospitalized for any disease, for any illness, let alone COVID-19. Yeah, so, please cooperate uh, with the instructions of our volunteers and certainly with the civil authorities. And indeed, this separation of church and state goes back, was identified by Pope Innocent III when he gave this important phrase. 
See, the, God gave the church the spiritual sword. God has two, give, give the world two swords. One, the spiritual sword to the church, and the other one, the temporal sword to the civil authorities. Uh, and civil authorities are important for peace, maintenance of peace, maintenance of the banking system, all the things that we do uh, in the physical, material world. Whereas the spiritual world, yes, is where the church comes in and they are important for our spiritual growth, our relationship with God, the church, the guardian of the scripture and tradition, right, and also helping to defeat the forces of evil, which is out of this world. So yes, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the importance of this distinction is always there. And for us also, the spiritual sword also includes mission. Today is Mission Sunday. So we thank God for the missionaries that come to Singapore 200 years ago. Next year, the church in Singapore will celebrate 200 years of its founding. 200 years of the first missionary to be sent to Singapore in the person of St. Inbert, who was teaching in Penang, uh, College General Penang, and he was sent, Rome sent him down to do a checkout, to do an investigation, to do a survey of exactly how many Catholics are here in Singapore, uh, and reported back that there are many, and they want a priest to be permanently stationed in Singapore. And that's where that laid the groundwork for the start of the church in Singapore. So we thank God for the missionaries and we always, likewise will do the same. Of course, nowadays, mission work has taken on many, many forms and shapes. So like yes, Singapore, or rather this parish, yeah, we, besides giving the donation to those appeal for funds, which is always in need, we also sent our own parishioners, or other parishioners have come forward to organize among themselves to do mission work in Sabah, in Thailand, in Myanmar. Right? That's what has been happening in the last two years. And there are others who followed this uh, acts to Cambodia, to uh, the Philippines, to Vietnam. And this is good because we there, we want to express our solidarity with the Catholics over there, right? There's, that there's no shame in them that they are poorer than us. There's no shame that uh, they are living in very simple housing and uh, very simple road. And we bear with that because we want to empower, help them to realize that God is with them, right, in their simple ways. Right? We share in the food they take to tell us that all, all these nourishments come from God. And then this, and this key thing called thanksgiving, which is highlighted in the second reading, where St. Paul's his opening lines of the first letter to the Thessalonians, see, he thanked God for giving them the faith, thank, giving them, these Thessalonians the faith to believe in God. And to believe in God means to, ex, to know of his word and his power. Ah, in the second reading. So yes, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we thank God for this Mission Sunday, and we also thank God that He has kept us in, the well, in good shape despite the COVID-19, then, then let us give Him power and glory as a response of some advise us to do uh, for doing that for, and continue let us continue uh, to invite God into our lives invite God to strengthen us and give us the stamina to persevere uh, in this pandemic crisis Amen
confession of faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all all things things visible and and invisible. I I believe in one Lord, Lord, Jesus Christ, Christ, the only begotten begotten Son of God, God, born of the Father before all ages, God God from God, God, light light from light, true God God from from true God. Begotten not not made consubstantial with the Father, Father. through Him him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came came down down from heaven, heaven. and And by by the Holy Holy Spirit Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our our sake he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered suffered death death and was buried, and and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. We acknowledge the ultimate power and majesty of God as we amid our own lowliness, we earnestly pray for our needs as well as the needs of the world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For all Catholics, that they will courageously bear witness to God's word and actively participate in building his church on earth as they lead responsible Catholic lives in the secular world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all governments and authorities, that they will act with integrity to put in place laws and practices that work for the good of everyone in every community and workplace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick, the needy and vulnerable, the poor and the unemployed, that those with resources will give them immediate help and comfort and ensure they receive fair and equal treatment, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our children receiving the sacrament of First Holy Communion this month, that as they receive the bread of life for the first time, they may grow in faith, experience God's love, and always maintain a deep love and reverence for the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For us parishioners, that we will manifest God's love by stepping out of ourselves to love our neighbors through service and intercessory prayer, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, keep us from placing earthly things above you and help us to acknowledge your sovereign kingship. Guide our daily lives so that others will know you are the one true God. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom. Your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. As your church makes a pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the path of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us to open scriptures and break the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, and on the night of the last supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, he gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the pastoral sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and granted by the power of spirit of your love. We may be counted now and enter the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity so that together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. And meet them rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. 
Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that come to eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Ignatius of Antioch and St. Richard Green, and with all the saints which are praised and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your view, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear Him, who hope in His merciful love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.